So as you guys might know, I, Dr. Daniel, had tried out doing black soldier fly farming. Well, getting the larvae to use them to feed my chickens. Because I had been told that it's a cheap option. And of course, it appeared like a cheap option. I tried it and from experience, I found out that it was so hard. It was so labor intensive. But recently, I actually discovered that there's a group of people who can make this work easier for you. That black soldier fly larvae farming can actually be made easier and it's a practical solution. So today, I've come to visit, I would say, a breeding farm for the black soldier fly larvae. And I honestly don't know what they really do here, but they're going to take us through. And hopefully by the end of the video, we'll have a very good and easy solution that might be practical for me and all you guys farmers. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm okay, how are you doing? I'm okay. My name is Kayan Jonathan Cornelius. Yes, and I'm a black soldier fly uh, breeding production manager. We do black soldier fly breeding, which is a whole process of how we get onto the five-day-old larvae. Marula Protein Uganda Limited is actually the owner of the facility and it is Uganda's number one biggest facility. We do the black soldier fly breeding. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Now I personally live in a country where Facebook is blocked. But obviously I do use Facebook for my business and I know that a lot of people actually access me and are able to find out about this channel from Facebook. How? Using ExpressVPN. All I do is open the ExpressVPN app, change my location to another country and I'll be able to access Facebook. So do you live in a country where particular websites are off limit? You can use ExpressVPN to get access to any of those websites. And by the way, currently I'm trying to learn Spanish. So once in a while I'll sit down and try to watch a movie that's in Spanish. But being in Uganda, it means that a lot of these movies are not available to me. All I need to do is change my location and appear to be in Madrid, you know, somewhere in Spain, and I'll be able to access all these movies on Netflix. So, are you in a country where you can't access particular movies? You know, the way it's made is that particular movies are only available to people in particular areas. Well, you can use ExpressVPN and make yourself appear in another area and you'll be able to access a lot of these movies for free. So get yourself a free three-month subscription to ExpressVPN when you use the link in the description of this video to subscribe. And thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video. Hot inside here. Exactly, because of the uh, conditioning okay. that is automatically uh, actually controlled to suit the production within our hub. It is a greenhouse, okay. however, unlike other greenhouses, it is made for black soldier fly breeding. Within in here, we can see uh, love cages. Love cages, and these are what they call the love cages. Exactly, these Why are, are what they call love cages. Them. They are the cold love cages because at one time expect breeding or mating to take place. That is between the male black soldier fly and the female mature black soldier fly. So when they come fly. together, we say they are making love, Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I see a lot of black soldier flies actually around me. Mm. And they harmful. No. Should I be worried? Not really. There's no need to. It, it, I even see one on your face. Exactly. Mm. They are, uh, we actually used to having them. Mm. However, they are harmless actually. Okay. They are not disease causing. They are not carriers of any form of disease. Uh, we are just free with them. Within here, we have uh, actually two stages. Okay. And that is the pupa stage and the adult stage. Okay. The metamorphosis uh, from pupa to adult takes place within here, whereby we are having a basement of pupae. I, I think I can see exactly. it. Exactly. Then uh, we have immediate eclosion of the flies. Okay. That is the flies emerging from the pupae. Uh, then we do have the flies actually maturing up. That is the male fly and okay. the female fly. Then we at, at one time expect them to mate. So I'll ask a question. Why are some of the love cages bigger and the others are smaller? Depending on the levels of production that we have gone through, uh, we are actually doing stepping ahead. Okay. From the small scale production up to the large scale or commercial scale production such that we can suit the would-be clientele. Mm. Can we have eggs being laid without males in here? Yes, it can happen. However, uh, the reason as to why it is called a breeding hub yes. is that at one time we expect an offspring from our what? 
from our yes. parent stock. Yes. Yeah, true. So we want them to be fertilized. Exactly. Okay. Once the female flies lay unfertilized eggs, we don't expect any hatching and we don't expect a future generation. I'll tell you something. Yes, when I was keeping my black soldier flies, because I had history mm. of keeping black soldier flies, yes, I had a, a cage. For example, this cage you can see. Mm. Yeah, this mm. love cage. Mm. It yeah. has few black soldier flies compared to this. Yeah. And from what I got, I, there's, there's times I would barely get any eggs. Is the number of flies inside the cage important for mating? True. It is very, very important. Uh, you find that Actually, the more the flies within the cages, uh, the more the pupae a, a given cage can handle. And of course, comparing the small cage to the big cage, you find that one will have a lot of pupae that actually turn into flies, yeah. which is the, the, the very lots of flies. And of course, uh, the more the production. Why the controlled environment? Why does it need to be controlled? Because honestly, I don't feel so comfortable inside here uh -huh, myself. It's, it's quite humid. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, it's a bit hot. Uh -huh. So why? With too much light. Yeah, with a lot of light. Exactly. Why is it necessary? After the great research, and actually for the whole time that the Marula has spent, okay. we have actually uh, seen that the breeding site is actually maintained or enhanced with yeah three parameters that have to be perfectly controlled mm -hmm. to ensure that we have each fly performing its role. Okay. That is the light, the humidity, and the temperature. Okay. That whenever we have an optimum temperature, we expect uh, the longevity of each fly. That is the male and the female. And actually, all this rotates around enhancing the welfare of the fly. Mm. When you enhance the welfare of any animal, any insect gives you what you want. The maximum okay. of its. So this fly it. loves a humid environment. Exactly. Another thing that I've noted is that there's a lot of dead flies around. Mm. Why? Yes, actually, this fly has a lifespan. Okay. Yeah, so when we input uh, the pupae and they turn into the flies, we expect there is a lifespan of around 14 days. 14 days? Yeah. So after the 14 days, the flies have to actually die off. They die on their own. Exactly. They don't die of any disease, nothing. No disease, it is their lifespan. They have such a short lifespan, just exactly. 14 days. Exactly. Yeah. And we have to make sure that within the 14 days, they give us their maximum. Okay. However, when they die off, they don't actually tend to be useless. Okay. Uh, we still recycle them to enhance our organic fertilizer, the, the protilizer. And we also use them as we make uh, the attractant, just as I will explain the different components of a love cage. Okay, please, let's mm. go on. Explain to me. This is a love cage. Okay. And a love cage simply refers to a netting okay. uh, that actually uh, holds or houses a given cohort of the same age flies. When we input pupa within the love cage, uh, of course, we do expect the flies to emerge. However, when the flies emerge, we need now to make sure that each fly performs its perfect role. What happens? We now get to onto the components of a love cage. Okay. We are having, first of all, the netting is white. Okay. Uh, this is simply to allow light as a paramount factor for fertilization or mating and reproduction within the love cage. Yes. And whenever it gets dirty, then it is our role to make sure that it attains its white color just like this one exactly this one looks dirty and of course you can see uh, whenever it loses productivity that is when flies are giving up when, when they are dying actually yes. we now empty empty the cages and we do clean each and every ah thing. so what you're trying to say is that with every cycle it will get dirty exactly i think you can see a yellow cloth yes i can see a yellow within, cloth inside within, here within the what within the cage yes uh, you know these flies are resting flies yes when it rests on you you will find that it will spend longer even if you try to shake around yes why because uh, we actually uh, are related to more of the milk producing cattle whereby they need enough rest mm. to ensure that they are what they produce enough milk okay so what happens that cloth or the yellow yes yeah, an attractant cloth it first of all provides surface for rest. Yeah. That when, when the fly rests, we expect it to waste energy only doing what? Feeding. Making eggs. Ah. Yes. Okay. Uh, then the other other part of it, 
is that the yellow cloth also aids uh, the fertilization. It actually attracts, you know, this, this fly in nature, it likes the attractive colors. Okay. Even when you find it in the wilderness there, you will find it on the attractive colored flowers. Okay. So this yellow cloth uh, attracts the males and the females. This increases chance for the males to do what? To mate, to mate with the females. Yes. And therefore, helping us because it is our aim to ensure that we have a fertilized egg. But the other thing is that, yes, to increase the welfare. When the fly is within the, the love cage ah, and is having the, the different colored surfaces. Surfaces. Yes. So you can see. Because I can see even a green, light green surface. Light green, light blue. Yes, light, light blue. Red, yellow yes white net yes this increases the liveability and of course uh, they feel at home okay and they feel that yeah, they're not it, bored exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. interesting uh, then talking about the egg laying media within the love cages okay we have an egg laying media and it actually consists of wooden pieces okay creative as we are we know that uh, actually the fly yes. will always want to lay in a protected uh, chambers, okay. protected cavities. Okay. So what we do, we improvised and made sure that we do make the egg laying shelters and cavities in a way that we just actually um, assembled. Okay. As you can see wood. I can see. Creative. Yes. Barula. Yes. Uh, so within this wood, I think you can see the spaces. Yes, the I can see The cavities within the pieces. Yes. This is where actually the flies will lay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that it is just a pin that is doing what? That is separating each block of wood. Yes. Yeah. It is called an eggy. Eggy? Yeah. Wow. Simply <laughs> because it holds eggs. Yes. Yeah. That would be what an egg laying box would be for me as a chicken farmer. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So now we do put this onto a dish containing attractant substrate. Okay. This is simply a substrate that attracts the female fly to lay where we actually put our egg shelters. Okay. Usually what's that attra attractant? What's the substrate itself? Yes, it actually contains fermented substances. Okay. It could be fruit juice. It could be fermented waste or any other thing that actually has a good odor for the flies. You know, uh, with natural instinct, the fly would like to lay where it feels uh, is safe for the for the babies. Okay. To what? When the babies come out, they have something to feed on. Exactly. Yes. So you find that uh, when they smell the fermented feed, they will now be like, ah, yeah. I'm, I'm this very is a safe place for me to lay eggs. Exactly. Yes. And then we also have uh, a cotton that is a water source. Okay. Which actually consists of cotton as a good absorbent. Yes. We do make sure that the fly actually gets water ad lib. Water ad lib. That means yeah. water, water when needed. Exactly. And yes. To its satisfaction. To its satisfaction. Such that it can actually, just as any other animal, it can actually give us the maximum. But what does the fly feed on? Because it has 14 days of life. What exactly. does it feed on? It only does water. Water is life. It only feeds on water. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No wonder it has a short lifespan. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the whole stage, uh, the fly feeds when it is still loving. Yes. So when we give it the waste, as you will see, that is the only time it feeds. Okay. On, 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 on substance. Yes. However, when it is an adult, it only feeds on water. On water. Yes. Because actually its mouth parts are actually modified to only do sucking. Sucking. What's the jerry cans I see at the end? Oh, the jerry cans, yeah, we are trying to do extension of the technology. We want to buy the, the audience, yes. showing them how best they can actually improvise to make sure that they do the black soldier fly farming. Yes. And of course, that is part of the material that we use. I see some light. Yeah. What are they for? Do they need light even in the night? Yes, as I told you, light is very paramount yes. in production of the black soldier flies. When actually uh, low light is detected within the house, sensors will automatically switch on the light. Is What's it? the purpose of these ceiling like material? Yeah, these are actually reflectors. Okay. When too much light, more than the optimum is actually sensed yes. by the house, these sheds automatically move. Okay. Yeah. They open and close just to make sure that 
only enough light that allows production to take place ah, is the one that is penetrates within the house. Curious. Of course, the more the light, the more the temperatures, and that is why we have a fogging system okay. that automated to bring back the temperatures to the optimum. But I can imagine it also helps with the humidity. Yes, that when it brings back the temperatures to optimum, it is increasing humidity. humidity. Yeah, increasing the lifespan and the longevity of the watch. Of the, the fly. fly. So what happens after the love cage? We, the breeding staff, yes. are getting to harvest the eggs. Okay. When the female fly deposits the eggs into the eggies, we now have to actually get the eggies, prepare them for the next step, which is the hatching step. Okay. And what is done, the eggies are removed from the love cages. Those are the eggies with the with Yes, the eggs. with the eggs inside? Yeah. Then we now do take them on our working table. Is it happening somewhere? Yes, it is actually Can I take a look? Because it happens on a daily basis. Happens on a daily basis. On a daily basis. I can imagine it's quite labor intensive. Yes, but of course, uh, after getting the skills, uh, you get to know how best you can manipulate and actually get the enhanced eggs. Can we have a look? Exactly. Yes. These are now the eggs. Yeah. As you can see, oh. the flies made good use of the cavities. Okay. And it is our main role of the day. Okay. Yeah. Why are they labeled in terms of numbers? Exactly. They are labeled in terms of numbers because each love cage within the insectarium, that is the greenhouse, is actually aligned to a given uh, basin and a given card. Yes. Uh, we do uh, identify the different cages yes uh, such that we can actually keep the records of the eggs that have been uh, produced by each cage and probably uh, we also get to find out why is cage eggs giving us these lots of eggs okay it could be because of maybe the season it could be that the flies are, uh, have died out uh, it could be that the cage is still new okay uh, the flies have just emerged yes so we need to get an appropriate identification of each cage and the production of each cage. I love that. Mm. So record keeping, record very keeping. important. Exactly. Okay. As you can see, this is our working table. Uh, what we do is to scrape the eggs. To and the eggs fragile because I'm seeing them using knives. The eggs look so small and tiny. Don't eggs. they get damaged? Exactly. However, with the skill that we have, yes. uh, our staff is able to manipulate okay. uh, the harvesting. Uh, those are not the sharp blades that we think of. It is more of a, a spatula. How many eggs does each fly give us on average? Uh, on average, every fly should give us 600 eggs. 600 However, eggs. However, it is a range between 500 to 800. Okay. Yeah, or more, depending on its welfare. Actually. Yes. Yeah. How many eggs on average does each cage give us? It ranges from 300 grams to actually 400. How much larvae can we get out of, of 400 grams of eggs? Uh, the standard uh, right now uh, is actually one gram of eggs giving us 100 grams of, of, of larvae. Five day old larvae. Yeah. Five day old larvae. Yeah. On a daily basis, we do make an average of around one kilogram of eggs. One kilogram of eggs, yeah, wow, so that's if, a lot. If, if one gram can give us a hundred grams of five-day-old larvae, then what could one kilogram of eggs give us? Gives us quite a lot. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, and however, uh, we are looking more uh, to actually uh, get more of the production because we are still maximizing our what? Your one cage. Facility. Okay. Yeah. So after here, what do we do? Yeah, so after here, we now get our eggs yes. uh, prepared for introduction into our incubator where the hatching takes place. So this is our incubator. Yeah. On the contrary, it's dark. Exactly. Yes. And it's and very hot and humid. <laughs> True. Yeah. Because of the conditioning okay. uh, that actually does enhance. So is this also hatching. automated? Yeah, it is also automated. We would actually want our farmer outside there not to go throughout these expenses. Yes. And we actually just want to produce for them the five-day-old larvae because this is a little tedious. Tedious and very expensive. Yes. Why, why are you saying it's expensive? As you can see, the, the environmental temperature, yes. Uh, it is having a 
automatically condition structures okay uh, then the actual welfare of the fly for it to be productive for that short period of time uh, you need to actually give it its best by day five uh, we do expect the five day old larvae to have attained uh, that desirable size yes ready for inoculating within our watch our bio waste at the treatment facility or at the farmer's household area as you can see they are assembling it just consists of uh, the eggs so these are the eggs at the top over exactly. here exactly these yes. are the eggs at the top uh, then uh, at the bottom is our starter feed okay uh, then we do expect what what is the starter feed made, made from the starter feed is made from starter feed streams uh, we do use uh, the spent grain uh, we at times use uh, the expired milk, the maize bran, chicken feed and all that stuff. Yes. Uh, just to make sure that, uh, however, it is mixed. Yes. It is actually rationed yes. in a way that it brings out uh, the five-day-old with desirable size. Okay. This is part of the, uh, uh, the skillful handling that we do talk of, that a given farmer outside there may not know what ration I should use. Yes. Because even protein, we are still finding better rations yes. that can give you an average size or a better with good a good quality five day old lab. Okay. Yeah. So, so that means that means the nutrient content of our starter feed it's actually ascertained. You people know the nutrient content of all the feed and it's consistent. Exactly. Okay. And we are looking of how best we can enhance it and make it better. Okay. True. Uh, so what happens is that when the eggs do hatch, this is just a frame yes. to make sure uh, that the eggs don't actually tap on the starter feed yes. because uh, they can actually uh, decrease the, the percentage hatchability. Yes. Exactly. So you find that when the eggs are on top here, the, the baby larvae will just fall, fall into, through into the, what, into the, the feed. starter feed, then do immediate feeding. Not until five days, uh, whereby this starter feed will all have been turned into a residue. Yes. After day five, we now do remove a given batch. So on a daily basis, we do input our eggs into our incubator and take them out as, as five-day-old larvae. You get it? On yes. a given day, we have a batch entering and a batch, batch going, going out. out. I personally had tried to do it on a more local scale doing everything simply from a room, uh, you know, with light, just using maybe, you know, polyphen, which is clear yeah. and yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had a lot of people personally reach out to me thinking about the option of themselves doing this process. Someone who is very far away might not be able to approach you to get the five day or lavi. Is it possible in any way or practical in any way for someone who doesn't have all this technology to actually go through all the steps that you, we've so far seen right here in their own setting somewhere else? Uh, well, just as I've said, it is complicated. Yes. It looks complicated. Yes. One thing that we actually look at is the machinery. Yes. Yeah. It is really, really ve very hard. And you know, for us farmers outside there, we want something to actually happen back, back to back. Yes. Something of that kind. We are very fast. I yes. will not call it being impatient. Yes. But we want to see our you fast to waste time. Yes. However, it has taken protein a very long, long time to see these results that on a given day we are having a kilogram of eggs. How long have you been in doing this? It is approximately seven years. Okay. Yeah. However, just to gain stability. Yeah, so we, we think now for, for that farmer outside there and you can see the whole technology within here. Yes. For a farmer outside there, it will actually be very, very long, seven years. What's the most difficult thing that you face? in this process, getting the, you know, from the fly stage or from the pupa stage to the five day old larvae. What are some of the challenges, the hardest challenges you faced? The consistency of eggs. Okay. You find that, as I've told you, uh, our average is one kilogram. However, we are having days uh, or a season whereby we are getting a uh, huge, huge harvest. Okay. And then the other seasons, we are getting low harvest. Yes. So ideally, after here, the next step we are going to see is the 
after the, the five day oil. Exactly. Okay. The five day oil is gotten out of the incubator, then it is taken uh, for conditioning uh, at the Bugolobi facility. Uh, where now we expect uh, to treat some waste because it is it is a treatment site. Yes. It could be the waste there or the waste at uh, a given farmer's place. Yes. However, a fraction of the five-day-old larvae is allowed to grow and to pass through the larvae stage, pupae stage. Uh, then it is brought Come back on. here uh, to sustain our what, our breeding colony. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very glad for the knowledge you've shared with us. I can't wait to actually go and see the rest of the process. Because I can imagine for a lot of our viewers over here, that's the more exciting point. Because that's what they want to see on their farm and that's what's useful to them. True. Yes. And I believe that's the easier section. It is the easiest section. Yes. Yeah.